We all know Marion, um, and she is going to talk to us about cartography and her plant drawing. So, without any more ado, Marion, I'm going to hand over the host the host to you. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, I left school having started my A-levels, but not finished them, one of which was art. And I would have liked, really liked to have gone to art school, but unfortunately it wasn't on the cards because of uh, there was no money available. So I got a job in Southampton working for the Ordnance Survey and um, ended up drawing maps like this. Can you all see that? Yes. Um, <laughs> it was very, very intense um, training course. We did surveying, although women were not allowed to be surveyors in, that, in the early 60s. We could only work in the drawing office. It wasn't seemly for us to be out on site. Um, so the instrument we used was a drawing pen like this. And the thickness of the line was very important. So you had to keep sharpening your pen. And we, we drew onto metal plates covered in enamel with Indian ink. This was then taken down to the um, a workshop where they printed plates from this and made the maps. And to get these little hashes, as they were called, where the railway lines are here, we used an ordinary dip pen and pressure from the pen to form the top, coming down and easing off so that you got a thick stroke turning into a thin stroke. So that was my beginning um, drawing in as a cartographer. And I stayed there for several years. Um, and then all the time, I still had an interest in drawing and painting. So I was very keen to continue this. But unfortunately, um, family and work commitments meant that, you know, you just didn't have any time for drawing or painting or anything other than living from day to day, basically. Um, as you all know. <laughs> um, in about um, 1990, I went to an evening class in Cockermouth. We'd moved up to the Lake District by then. My husband was travelling all over the country with work. And we ended up in this little village, which is actually on the map of Ullock. Um I went to an evening class and the lady was um, an illustrator and showed us how to do botanical painting, basically. And I didn't realise that with watercolour and coloured pencil, you could put layer upon layer upon layer of colour to achieve the depth of, of colour to give you that intensity that I think is... is um, what I fell in love with. So this um, evening class lasted for a couple of years and I was then working in a, um, a drawing office, architectural drawing office up here. <clears throat> this then um, moved on to me working um, and getting a qualification in building and so I did eventually end up on a building site in spite of uh, all the restrictions there were in the 60s. In the 1990s, I was able to work on site. So I got there in the end. Um, and when I retired in 2000, I was able to take up painting a bit more seriously and went to several courses at Higham, 
with different um, uh, teachers. And Valerie Oxley was the, the main botanical artist there. And she persuaded me that I would like, as she said, I would like to do the two-year Society of Botanical Artists distance learning course, which was very, very intense work. You had to produce a, a piece of work every two months, and it was strictly governed by um, style um, um, and type of material you were using. So we went from uh, graphite work through coloured pencil to watercolour. And I ended up with my qualification in 2011. With a distinction, I might add. I, I really ought to show you the picture of, that my husband took of me collecting my diploma, which I'm, unfortunately I'm standing in front of a huge display of, of flowers so it looks as though I've got a floral hat on, but anyway, <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> I I'll, I'll, must get that and show you sometime. But um, we're here today really to talk about coloured pencil, which not my first love, to be honest. It's um, my first love is probably watercolour. But I have done during lockdown quite a lot of coloured pencil work because it's something you can pick up and, and leave as, as and when you want because uh, it, it's, it's static and it's good in that way. So I've, I'll show you how I've started. I started with these um, photographs of these uh, crocuses, which really took my eye. It was the shine on the outside of the petals and the smoothness as they curve down inwards that really impressed me out in the garden. So I took the photograph. I then drew it freehand um, to scale and, and ended up with a, this tracing, which I transferred onto my watercolour paper. And in in order to get the colours, mm. I used my sketchbook and I tried out all the colours. Here you can see on the right. I used, I used a very fine pencil, um, clutch pencil, to do the drawing. But I've worked out which colours will give me this, this purple because obviously no coloured pencil is going to give you the exact colour that you want. And it's a matter of layering one on top of the other. And to be honest, it's, it's um, very hit and miss, but a lot of experience will tell you, even the greens here are not one simple green, it's layer upon layer. So I've worked out what my final mix will be for the green here and the final mix here for my petals. So this is quite a simple drawing, really. Um, good for a demonstration, I felt. So I did quite a bit of work in my sketchbook just to see how much, how, how much depth I could get in the colour. And uh, you can see here I've worked some of these petals up to full strength here but these have only had about these have had three layers on this one's had four layers and this one's had five layers of pencil on and the, the leaves were much simpler they've only had three layers on but these up here have only had um, one layer on so I'll my colored pencils lay out in a tray like this so that I have um, they don't roll off the table that's quite handy for me and I usually put them in order so that when I 
you either end up with um, a handful of pencils that go from one to the other, but I like to lay them out in a tray like that. And if I can turn the camera around, you'll see the see the the amount of pencils that I have to choose from there. But it's important to get this right at this stage. So a lot of um, coloured pencil tutors will um, tell you to work. I need something for my hand because the grease from your hand will will transfer to the paper and then you won't be able to get any pencil on top. Um, a lot of colour pencil tutors will tell you to use tiny circles to get the coverage initially. I find that a bit laborious and I prefer to use a method where I'm working from the darkest area to the lightest and working towards and in the direction that I feel the petal is formed. It's quite difficult to explain, but I think if you've got a cup shape and you're, you're making cup shape marks, then you'll get a better result uh, and it will look more natural. But as I say, little circles will cover, but it's a very light touch and your pencils must be very, very sharp. Can you see that point on there? Mm -hmm. So it will be one layer. This is, these are Derwent artists, which are quite a good all round general pencil. And the fact that we can get them, fortunately, at Keswick is a real godsend. And on top of that, the next layer is this called Red Violet Lake. And eventually you will fill in all the um, indentations in the paper, the um, sort of tooth of the paper, but you need that tooth to take all the layers of, of pencil. So it is important. So this is very boring, you watching me doing all this. But anyway, you'll get the idea that I'm gradually building up a different colour. And when we get to a certain stage, I'll work on this one here now. This is my fourth layer on this, this one here. And I'm pressing a little bit harder now to get more of the pencil into the tooth of the paper. It's, it's a, um, this paper is um, Stonehenge, but uh, any uh, hot pressed watercolour paper is good for coloured pencil. Or you can use Bristol board, which isn't my favourite. I find it a little bit shiny and um, more difficult to work on, I think. I don't know. We've got quite a few really good coloured pencil workers in the audience so I don't know how they feel but um, and a lot of um, of you I know use pastel map which I, I've never tried so I can't tell you about that one so you can see how it's building up now the colour and a little bit more Light is coming from this direction, from the left, so I need to make sure I've got a little bit of darker colour in there. So those are all Derwent artists. This is the new Derwent Lightfast pencil, which is 
is a is a lot smoother. It's it's more waxy, so you have to be very very gentle with it. it it's quite an intense colour, but it does it does give you a really nice finish on top of the other colours I've found. And then when I come to do this outside lip of the petal, I've only used um, two colours, three colours, I think. This is where I end up with holding them all in my hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so again, I'm working from the outer edge to the inner edge. Well, it, sorry, the inner edge to the outer edge here. Making sure that it's, I'm pressing a little harder on the outside because that's in shade. But I will leave a little highlight there. <clears throat> and always reinforcing the edge by, by going round the edge as well. It's just a case of building up these layers until you get the desired depth of colour. I can get totally lost in this, so... Um, I end up not speaking, which is very bad for a demonstration, but they are. <laughs> so on top of that, you can use um, to push the colour into the paper itself and get rid of all these little um, tiny indentations. You can use white. I don't know if you can see that's. Although it's white, it's actually making the colour a little bit darker. Or uh, you can use a Derwent burnisher, which is just pure wax. And that, I'm pushing quite hard now to get the colour into the paper. And then the center is <clears throat> Use the I'll use the little circles on this because it's just a very small area. <clears throat> and just the orange will give a little bit of detail. And the three colours for the leaves I <clears throat> Started with a pale green. Slightly darker green. And the 
bluer and more blue green to give a bit of shade. So, here's one I did earlier. Hopefully. Mm. So that's the uh, the finished article. Is and any anybody want to ask questions or get me to do more or anything? I can show you. Um, these are trying to help with this. Hi. This is uh, yeah, that's foxglove with a B um, that I did actually last summer. And bluebells. Yeah, you can see. That's pencil. Um, how many colours I've used in the oh. bluebell, because when you actually look at a bluebell, it isn't really blue. It's more pink, purple. Um, uh, it was very, very difficult to get the blue on that, I must admit. So, But I do like to include the little bee, same on the foxglove. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Pineapple. Is that a pencil? That's coloured pencil again, That's yes. amazing. Yeah, that took me a long time, but I, I enjoyed it. It's wonderful. <laughs> and I was able to eat it afterwards as well. <laughs> <the bonus. laughs> That's yeah. stunning. Wonderful. See down here where I've done a little trial oh, of yeah. each little segment um, yeah. with, my, with my pencil notes here. Gosh. And this is a hellebore that... Um, I did earlier this year. Oh. And I had a little go at um, pen and ink, which I quite enjoy doing. And leaves, leaves and conkers. Gorgeous. Any, anybody? Want to ask any questions, Ted? Can people unmute or? Yeah, if anybody wants to ask any questions, you'll need to unmute yourself. Uh, Marion, do you do, yes. you say that you prefer watercolour as a medium? Yes. Do you have any examples of that you could show us um, to compare with the coloured pencils? Right. Um, I actually did. Yes, I'm, I'm disappearing now. Can you see that? That's watercolour. Yes. Mm. Oh, sh um, I was looking to see if I've got a honey ball in the Yes, there's a hellebore in watercolour. And is the technique that you use quite similar? No, because with watercolour you're, you're doing washes, as you can see here. I work from a wash. I suppose, in a way, it's the same principle, one layer upon another. But watercolour, you use washes to bring up the intensity. Yeah and end up with that compared with mm. fantastic mm. Oh, yeah. two together oh that's interesting to see the two yeah so it depends uh, i must admit some subjects do lend themselves more to watercolor than colored pencil but it's just how i feel on the day really <laughs> Mm. Anybody else? Can I ask one? Yes. Do you ever uh, use the watercolour pencils? 
yes, but only dry. I've I've not used them and and wet them. But a lot of water co of uh, coloured pencil artists do use a watercolour pencil to to put a basic wash on. Um, mm. You know, as I would on um, you know some of these petals, you could use a watercolour wash with the coloured pencil. And That's acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm.